guys, I am Chris Kaler. And I'm Amber from Sakujin Cosplay, and today we are back with guys with Demon Slayer! Uh, episode 8 of season 2, or the first episode of season 2, because before that, that was the movie recap. Literally on the website we're watching it, it's, it they said it as episode 1 of the entertainment arc. So, it's episode 8 of season 2, so let's, let's get clear about this. We did jump... Uh, over episode two to seven because it's a it's basically the movie and we did react to the movie already So if you want to watch that it's on the playlist. So check it out yeah. uh, Last episode that we did check the first episode of season two Which was the prequel to the movie an episode centered around Rengoku We've seen once again why he was such a cool guy buying bentos left and right just twice for, Just because he could twice. twice and being nice and saving people and just following his father's footsteps and being loved by everyone, so it sucks. It, I mean, it just twisted the blade because we knew what was gonna happen to him. But now we're after this, we're gonna deal with the consequences, the grief, because I mean, he just got close to someone they cared about, and that person just died saving people, saving them, saving them. And uh, I do wonder what's gonna happen with Tanjiro's sword because he did kind of lose it. <laughs> he broke it. Well, no, he's it's stuck in the demon. He left with it. <laughs> I mean, Again, it, maybe it fell in the forest somewhere and he's gonna find it. But uh, maybe. I, I was wondering in the movie, like, but but his sword. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I do wonder if there's, I mean, if we're gonna call back eventually to Rengoku's family, but maybe not. In the meantime, uh, I know we're gonna get to know another Hashira, the one with the jewels. So I am excited about the that. Sound Hashira? Is that right? Sound? Is it a sound Hashira? That it, was yeah. the name of the title. Yes. Saundashira Tengenuzu. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, I know the opening is gonna be different, so unfortunately we're gonna have to learn another one. <laughs> Fudge! So yeah, I mean, let's just jump right into this first episode of season two, see what this new arc is about, and uh, yeah, get the excitement rolling and stuff. All right, it's been too long. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you wanna know when these episodes come out and check out our Patreon for the full reactions. Let's go! Let's go! Oh no, no, no recap of this, please! <laughs> Which number was he? I don't remember. I don't recall, but I do remember that his design was cool. Yes. And his music was like techno vibe. He kind of reminds me, mind, yeah. kinda reminds me of Sukuna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Rengoku. Rengoku. He fought till the end. He almost got him. <laughs> Except you! Oh, I love the art. The colors are good. I think it's the same, you know, production design than Fate Zero. The same group that did Fate Zero. You didn't look it up. Well, I mean, it says Euphotable. Euphotable? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same. Upper Tree. Upper three. Yeah, that's... that's Powerful. Powerful. I mean, most of what I, I mean, I love the story in Fate Zero, but I think the designs was mostly the thing that I loved the most, you know, the thing that made me fall in love with it. <sighs> it's one way to start this. Fuck off. Yeah, you, you photable. Yeah. Table? You photable? I don't know. You photable production. So that's why it looks so good. <laughs> Are we back again with no? Is it no? Wait, is it him? Is it is it her? I don't think so. No. You were talking about the the doctor. Yeah. yeah. Unless this is Kibusuji in another form. <laughs> He's now a child. <laughs> I like his look as a woman. Ma, <laughs> Is it him? Is it him? I don't think uh, so. His face could I don't, be I don't I mean, think so. It could be his new disguise. You think? He's, a, he's intelligent, he came to them, the face looks familiar. I need to see his eyes. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. He's so good at disguise! <laughs> He's playing a, a pride. A child is a good disguise. No one would guess. No. Uh. 
the voice and stuff. <laughs> He needs to die. <laughs> they suck. You should be able to get rid of ten of Shiraz if you could. He would be dead if he was weaker. One finger the death to him! Is better than nothing? How come you know about this shit? <laughs> if he kills him, I'll be mad. You cannot win against Kibutsuji like this. Whether you're a sword <laughs> demon slayer or a demon. Then Goku gave everything to almost kill him. That guy does this and he almost dies. Well, he does have a certain power control over his own demons. Yes, and he's got their, they got his blood and stuff. Still. <laughs> Not another one! <laughs> Next time we meet, you're gonna be dead, guys. Challenge buddy. fucking accepted. I'm not saying we're strong enough yet, but challenge fucking accepted. Main character, plot armor, let's go. Are we gonna fight with the brother? We could meet. They are so much alike. It's him. It's mini him. Baby Rengoku, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck off. I swear, I was giving you excuses. You better fucking shake him up. <laughs> he recognizes the earring, so have you met have you met his dad? Father, maybe? He knows about that. Teach us, please, teach us! Well, at least tell us why you know about this. Now he's the sun breathing! <laughs> Dude, he's wounded! Fuck off! Okay, fuck that shit. I don't care what he's been through. He doesn't have to do that. Yes, there you go. I was giving him excuses last episode! <laughs> What is it? The book. Whoa! <laughs> the most powerful of them all. Okay. Okay. Oh man. But tell me all about it, please. Makes sense that your original demon would be afraid of that. <laughs> He's not technically yet. Well, apparently his family has been doing that. Uh, oh shit. <laughs> Fuck off, stop it. No. That hard head of his. I know that the father is a jerk, but I think that a part of him is. Sad. Sad that his son died, yeah. I wanted to keep it for the discussion, but I'll say it now. We understand why he is like this, but that doesn't just that doesn't uh, you know excuse. forgive or excuse yeah, no. what he's doing. He was a fucking beast. He was like an inspiration. He was great. 
力を及ばず申し訳ありません気に入らないでくださいあにもきっとそう言いましたよね<笑>父がよく見ていた書物には心当たりがありまして炭治郎さんが知りたいことは書かれているでしょうかこ,これは<笑> I mean, I can understand the flame breeding descending from the sun breeding. You know? All the All breeding techniques are from that. Oh, whoa. Just never stop. Keep training. Mm. Yeah, you do that and you give him hope and you give him motivation because he needs it now. <laughs> Don't listen to your dad, your dad is lost. That can actually happen? ある程度の剣術を身につけないと日輪刀の色は変わらないものですがどれだけ稽古をつけてもらっても私はダメだった Dude, just go back with them to, to the adult there she doesn't train there は諦めます No それ以外の形で Well, okay, but 人の役に立てることをしますエンバシラの継承を断たれ長い歴史に傷がつきますが<笑>兄はきっと I'm, he never, I, I, there's no forgiving, I think. I think he was always proud of you. He was. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Like, you do what, you, what feels good to you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Stop with the feels! That's a little too! <laughs> like, better use it as a swordman, you know, rather than a, keep it as a trophy or something. Just tell him. Just tell him and leave. Because it's probably something like I loved you or something. Yeah, and he's gonna cry. Is that he had years to to have the great relationship, but and he messed it all up. That's the thing. It's only when you lose something that you, uh, yeah. when you when you lost something that you understand its value. You know? Yeah. I mean, they're not all depressed. You know? <laughs> they're taking this as, like we said, an opportunity to get motivated and train. Look at how buff they're getting! <laughs> Damn! Oh. Jesus. <laughs> they want to get stronger. This is, yeah. Wow, okay. No. <laughs> They're getting stronger together. Mm. The fuck? Uh, what's, what's going on? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you steal girls from? It's not even your house. What the fuck? Get out! <laughs> I gotta say, it's not a it's not a good introduction for him. Hehehe <laughs> 
Yes, but yes, good yeah. orders for what? He's holding two of them. I don't care about orders. That's not how you treat girls. People in general. Or people in general. He's gonna fucking headbutt anyone who steps out of line. Oh shit. <laughs> We don't care! You're stealing Bomber people! Shinobi. Okay. <laughs> well, you didn't say why you were taking them! I love that! <laughs> She's not. Yeah, but she's not. She said herself that she wasn't. I can be a pretty girl too. Yeah. We got Nitsuko also. Yes, but she's not. Yeah. Oh, coming right on time. We're not girls, but it's fine. Well, you know, Suki has a pretty face. Yeah, it's true. Show your face, you might be like, okay. You can be useful to us. <laughs> what? <laughs> there was a line that was crossed. <laughs> what the fuck? The entertainment district. Did he need girls to play prostitutes? The red card, uh, the red district. <laughs> yeah, my red light district, maybe. Mm -hmm. Ah, so was um, that where he was last season? At the end, when he was dressed as a girl. <laughs> We're so gonna check it out. We're gonna go into the into the red light district. Yeah, but that guys. was that why you needed girls for you to pretend to be prostitutes? So are they gonna dress as prostitutes? <laughs> They're gonna be fine. Yeah, I mean they are. <laughs> he's the most he's the most believable. Oh, we learned his backstory. I hope. Well, I mean, I said before every Ashida probably has a reason for having becoming you know for having gone so far. You need motivation. Okie dokie! So, well, before we talk about uh, the, the heavy stuff, I want to talk about the ending here really quickly. Really loves your... <gasps> what? <laughs> that was out of line. That is no way to treat a girl. Or, or anyone. Anyone in general. That's just that, you, that's crossing a line. Like, first of all, you don't show up. Like, no matter who you are, I really enjoyed, like, I was about to say, I like that Tenjiro, because he's seen him before, so he knows he's a Hashira, and mm -hmm. I like that Tanjiro saw him as a kidnapper in that moment, so he wasn't, you know, respecting him or anything, and he wasn't letting him do his what he well, wanted because he was a Hashira. What he know? was doing wasn't okay. I know, but be, be, him being a Hashira, you would expect a level of, you know, of respect coming from the other Demon Slayers. So, Tanjiro is not that type of person, but someone would let him do whatever he wants based on his rank. And I love that Tanjiro is not that type. He's being like, I don't acknowledge you as a Hashira. Well, there's a the thing. I don't care. <laughs> you know, some people might say that uh, in a place that you need to give respect to your elders, to the one that are above you. Yeah. No matter what they do, you need to still pay respect to them. And Unless got, they do and shitty stuff. Got, other people said that, I'm not gonna respect you if you're doing stuff like that. Well, the same could you know? be said, like, I, I said we were not gonna talk about this, but I'm just quickly gonna say, the same could be said of the father from before. He's the elder, he's the father of Rengoku, yeah, he just lost his son. This is a former Hashira, you know? Yeah, don't give him respect if he's not giving you any either, you know? Like, there are lines not to be crossed, and that guy was cross both of them were crossing lines. You don't just show up. Don't say why you need these two girls and just take whoever you want to leave with them. Yeah. You don't ask their uh, their opinion or anything. Like fuck off. Especially since now the th the trio is gonna go. It's gonna be a big thing. 
and it's it's apparently going to be a if if Hashirai is taking care of it, it's going to be a dangerous mission. Mm -hmm. These two girls were not going to survive this. Well, one of them is not even one of the court member, and the other one said that she doesn't have the skills to be a demon slayer and go out and do what they do. You know, that was a point she made. She talked about with Tanjiro last season. But still, like you don't do that. You don't just steal people, not tell them why you you need them, and just leave with them. Like that's kidnapping, and that makes you look like a jerk. So that's not a good impression for for that first ca that character. Oh. Uh, that's not a good first impression for that character. And uh, I mean, he can be redeemed for sure. But so far, well, I don't know what to from think. From <laughs> what I've saw in the opening. It's gonna be interesting, so I can wait of to course. see more of his backstory and what he's gonna do next. I said it twice now, but in my opinion, and I mean, I talked about this with even them, you know, it's good. I said it's good motivation to lose Rengoku and to see it as I gotta get stronger because I was weak. It's bad to allow yourself to fall into the de the well of depression, which I think is what the father, Rengoku di Rengoku's dad did. You know, letting yourself fall because there's too many deaths, too many mm -hmm. failures and stuff, and you just, bleh, you, you let yourself crumble. And I mean, I don't like that Tan Tanjiro, Tan Jesus, my pronunciation today. Tanjiro. Tanjiro is blaming himself and saying, you know, if I had been stronger. But he is taking this as motivation to become better. And he's saying there's no short way, you know, quick way to get strong and stuff. I just got to train. I love that. Because that's what you gotta do, you know? You're not gonna become strong overnight. And I mean, I don't like that you put that on your shoulders, that blame, but at the same time, it, it is good motivation. And I think this is what all the Hashiras had to go through in some way. Mm -hmm. They all suffered enough that, you know, this became motivation to go after the demons. I think you gotta have a certain amount of hate towards the demons or a certain goal that's strong enough that's linked to the demons to push you to the point of becoming a Hashira. Like even Tanjiro, because of who he is and because of his sister being a demon, he's got this kindness. Like he's he's apologizing to the demons when he's killing them and he's he connects with them and because of his scent and stuff, like he feels their emotions and we got all these flashbacks about who they used to be. He connects with who they used to be yeah. because his sister's a demon. Still, he's got a pretty strong motivation to go after demons considering what happened to his family. So now I off, and now you add to that Rengoku and stuff, he's got the motivation to become a Hashira eventually. And I, I kind of want to see that happening. <laughs> Apparently his family is a, has a long line of people who knew the first breeding technique ever. Speaking about that, I really... How could every other type of breeding descend from... It's just moves. Yeah, it's, it's a dance. It's smooth. I know. It's you know just it's just, you start from that and then you adapt it to an element or to a, a style. Okay. So now we know that he got a, a pretty strong type of breeding. Well, those hearings were passed down, it looks like, from father to son and stuff like that. So I would not be surprised if you told me that his ancestors were, you know, slaying demons with that. Obviously, one of them met Kibutsuji and he's afraid. He's been afraid ever since. He's afraid of the technique. He's afraid of those hearings. Uh, so, well, we kind of knew beforehand, but now that it is more uh, explainable why he decided to kill the family, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying... I don't know if his dad was a, a demon slayer. Because, I mean, I, Tanjiro was pretty young when he died. And his dad already looked old. So maybe it's part of his past and... Tanjiro never knew about it, but I kind of assumed that if he was a demon slayer, perhaps Tanjiro would have heard about this. And he didn't even know demons were a thing. So maybe, maybe his dad was just, he just knew the dance, but somewhere oh. along the way, one of his family members had to have been a demon slayer. Or at least, like, the dance, it's not just a dance, like, it's an actual breathing form. So they, someone had to have created this, and it looks like his family is the one that is passing it down from father to son, so <laughs> it makes sense also that the guy with the first, you know, breathing style ever would go after the first demon ever. The strongest breathing style against the strongest demon, which by the way, like, he's so fucking scary. You see him as a child, like, he has that vibe of envy from Full Metal It gave me that vibe from Pride, because it was being a child Oh, right not envy, no, not envy. Pride. Pride, yeah, I keep... I keep mixing them up. It's just so much power from such a small form. 
and it, he's so good at disguises like even we were like is it him like it's hard to guess like the face changes so much no one would guess no one would assume he's a master in disguise yeah michael jackson a pretty geisha a geisha <laughs> no kid yeah i mean he, he goes for after, after he was found it's almost like he got so scared that the the earrings came back the hearings were you know flashbacks to that time where he almost died i guess mm -hmm. and he you know we all already established that he's kind of like a coward you know he, he's he's so afraid to die that there that's why he made sure the demons could not uh, join together and, and plan against him they can't speak his name you know so for someone who has so much strength he is so afraid of death and it, it kind of shows because as soon as he noticed he went into disguise and he went for vulnerable disguises a woman a child characters that you could you know you could almost say the demon slayers if they find him they might not swing at him they might just be like oh so, you know or they might just not just look at him twice just just by him. but like he, it's like he's, he's trying to appear weak he's trying to appear vulnerable and stuff so they won't pay attention you know he's trying to stay very low that's in my opinion that shows that he was scared he got really scared well, despite he what he's scared. saying the stronger that you are, the the higher that you are, the harder you're, you're gonna fall. Yeah, but you know? I think it's mostly because he's afraid of death. That could be the reason why he became a demon. Immortality. Like, I don't know how he became a demon. I don't know why he's the first one, how that happened, but... Maybe he was born this way. I don't know. Who knows? I think it's convenient that a guy that's so afraid of death would turn into an immortal demon. I don't think you get you, you, he was born this way. I don't know. But in any case, when whatever happened, it, yeah, whatever happened, I think it's convenient that he became immortal and he's afraid of death. Maybe he did that to himself to escape. He's afraid of, like, I don't know if he was ill, maybe he was dying from an illness, because he also reacted last season when someone called him sick. And he was like, do you think I look sick? Do you think I look weak? Like, he is, he's afraid of appearing weak and stuff. And then he takes the, the you know, the disguise of of a child and before that a woman and stuff just to make sure that they don't find him I like I, it's interesting I want to know more about his character <laughs> but in the meantime when he's facing his demons he is crazy strong and he's got so much power and the, the way he says like you know you're boasting about killing a Hashira when in fact they're nothing as a demon you should you should crush them you know you, you should crush 10 every day almost like I'm like yeah. dude so much not uh, such low respect for such strong characters. <laughs> well, to, for me, it appears that he doesn't go outside that much because he doesn't know that demon slayers can be pretty strong. Or, I mean, it's also a bit of, you know, if the Hashiras start... Because, I mean, the lower six were afraid of Hashiras. Like, they would not go against them. They would run the other way. And he was like, if, you sh if he's afraid of humans, it's fucked up. But if his demons start being afraid, he loses credibility. Mm -hmm. He's like, are you more afraid? I think he said something like that in season one. I'm more one, afraid of demons than you are of me. Exactly. Like he loses credibility, so he's got to be like, you should be like, as a demon, you should feel stronger. You should feel more powerful. Like, you should not boast about killing a Hashira. It should be happening every day. <sighs> he's saying that to his third level, you know, his, his third more, most powerful demon. Upper three, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... And then coming from a guy who's hiding and is also afraid, that's just saying a lot. But yeah, that's for later when we when we meet him again. Ah, Rengoku's family now. Okay, uh, I'll say this. The father, that last was, episode, I gave him... It was really sad seeing the brother crumble and crying from for his brother's death, seriously. The father, I gave him excuses last episode. Well, excuses. It's not necessarily excuses because because I don't excuse what he says and what he does when it, with his sons and stuff. Like he chose to lose himself in the alcohol and he chose to despair and stuff like that. And I understand there's a reason. I understand he went through some shit and I I understand why I, I can't understand why he got to this point. Or at least we talked about this and I came up with probably a justification of why he mm -hmm. became this but that doesn't excuse what he says and he crossed so many lines this episode i got so mad and i was saying like i got gave you excuses last episode now fuck <laughs> up like it wasn't excuses because uh -huh. it's it doesn't excuse what he does 
It's true though that seeing him cry at the end it gets it's emotional because dude, you could have had this with your son. You could have had a relationship and you chose to insult him, put him in the ground. And maybe, you know, in a way he was saying that so Rengoku would give up being a Hashira, you know? Because I still think that perhaps if he was a Hashira and he became this, maybe the weight got too much, like the weight of the job was so much that it crumbled him. And he's like, if I wasn't capable of doing this, you're not gonna be capable of doing this. I think it's a transfer of hatred. Like he hates himself for what he became. And so he's transferring it to his son, yeah. which happens a lot. And he, that's, that kid did not deserve that. And despite that, his last words to him are like, take, take care, care of, of yourself. yourself. The dad is like, shit, like I lost a good, good son and I messed that up and like he's still thinking of me in the end despite everything he never thought of himself and he cries and I'm like yeah yeah you fucking cry like that's your fault I, you know what <laughs> I just hope that this is gonna be a wake-up call for him because he's got another son and he's gonna make a change for his uh, his youngest because damn you already lost one of your son and the worst don't is the, don't lose your second son please the worst is the other one has that mentality of I'm never gonna be good enough to be a swordsman. And at first when he said that, I was like, dude, if you wanna be a swordsman, train more and just keep trying. Then he said, I'm gonna, you know, if I say, if I can't be a swordsman, I'm gonna do something else to help. And I'm like, okay. And Tanjiro was like, do what you wanna do. And I'm like, yes, yes. If you wanted to be a swordsman, I was like, I would have been like, okay, keep trying. Like it, if you're not strong enough yet, it can still happen. You just gotta try. But if he's found another way to fulfill his dreams and help, that's good too. Don't let your father call you weak and, and you know, put you down like he did your brother. Although now that he's not a swordsman and he's, gonna, he's not going to try to be a Hashida or anything, uh, perhaps he's not hearing that from his dad. But Because, I mean, I think that's the only reason why he was telling Renbuku that. But still, like I think it's that way of talking to his sons allowed this kid to think of himself this way. Like, I'm not good enough. I'll give up right now, you know? Yeah. But despite that, Rengoku always showed him support and like, he was such a good person. Aww. And it sucks that he died. But the father, like, he, he's got some growing up to do and he's got some shaking up to do. And it may be like, he did put down the sake at the end. Maybe it's gonna be a sort of wake up call. Cause, for um, his sake and for his son's, his son's sake, sake, I'm gonna really hope for him that it is but like the crying in the end like i do i i, I was got, getting emotional but i can't help but think like dude you had years to get to know your son you had years to tell him you were proud you had years to tell me you loved him and you messed yeah, it up but unfortunately that's the thing that we've seen so many times yeah no like it's only when you lost something that you understand that you really care about it that you the value of things you know, people, people, family, friends that you care about, that once they are gone, they're gone. Yeah, but it's one thing, but in this case, it's the mistreatment that he was giving him. Like, the brother could be like, fuck, like, I never told him I loved him. It, I, I, I didn't tell him I loved him enough. Like, it could be that. Like, I didn't realize, you know, that we had so little time. It could be that, but with the father, he mistreated him. Yeah, he but... insulted him. He put him down every chance he got because he didn't he didn't like the path he chose for himself. And at the end, he thought that his son was maybe insulted him for his last words, but he just said like, "Take care of yourself." So yeah. even even though that he mistreated him, at the end he had still good thought for his father, for his family. So it's a train of thought that we we can get sometimes from people like that who. You know, they know they're doing something wrong and they don't want to get judged. So in the end, he's like, oh, his last words to me were probably, you know, him judging me for what I became, you know. Because, I mean, he was a Hashira and he was doing the job and he died fighting and protecting people. So he probably thought of himself as mighty and bitter, better than me and stuff like that. So he probably, you know, insulted me in the end. Like, he doesn't want to be judged, so he's defensive. And to find out that his son actually j only just cared about his well-being. He was like, just please take care of yourself. I'm like, ah, well, there you go. Missing opportunity. But yeah, it was sad. I did get teary-eyed. Like, it was really sad to see him cry. But I feel more sad for the brother. And I feel so sad for Rengoku. Because he <laughs> had to deal with this shit and keep smiling. I know. 
I really know. <laughs> but I do love that Tan Tanjiro showed up with the messages. I do love that he met the brother and he, he gave him a sort of Rengoku speech where he's like, you gotta do what you gotta do, follow your path, and, and as long as you do what you want, you'll be fine. Because, I mean, that kid needs the support. And now we, we have a little more clues about what we can do. I'm wondering, though, why the father was so angry when he learned that Tanjiro was a, a sun breeding welder. Well, maybe it's it's got to do with what I said before, you know, the pride of, you know, if he's he's watching the the other Hashiras and he, you know, he's a failure in his eyes, you know, he failed as a Hashira, so if he meets another Hashira, I'd be like, oh, you're looking down at me. Then he's meeting a guy who wields the first and most powerful breathing technique. It's kind of like the same thing. Oh, you think you're better than me? You think you're, you know, you can look down at me, judge me for what I became? It's, I think it's that type of reaction. Unless there's something personal that happened there, like he met a wielder, which I mean in this case would have been his dad, I guess. <laughs> if his dad was was a demon slayer, but we don't know. Maybe. So if he was a demon slayer and he met, perhaps, because there's a reason why he stopped being a Hashira. Maybe there there's a story there, but I don't know. It, it from first perspective, from first you know first time viewing, first time you know thinking about this, it looks like. It's a defense mechanism of, don't judge me. Like, what right? I don't want to be judged by people who are doing better than I did. Or people who have... Like, you know, it's it's his peers. It's people that fought like he did. It's, be, it's other Ashiras, or it's, in this case, it's someone that wields the strongest Well, from what and... I can see, he looks himself as... He's thinking of himself as a failure. So well, yeah. but that's the thing. Like, it's one thing to be judged by someone who doesn't know what you went through, but... To be judged by someone who went through the same shit, it's different. So as a demon slayer, if someone who doesn't know about demons wants to insult you and stuff, like it falls flat. They don't know what you've been through, so they don't, there's no weight behind their insults. But if you're meeting another demon slayer who's been through the same hurt yeah. and they judge you, then you're like, oh fuck, I must really be a failure. Mm. So I think this is what, perhaps that's what came from the encounter here, but... I don't know. All right. Perhaps if the son, you know, re, you know, re, redoes the the chronicles and stuff, perhaps perhaps we'll learn more about this. But Maybe. that's for later. All right. In the meantime, like... we will dress like prostitutes. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're gonna go into the red light district, guys. I mean, the entertainment district. Red light. It's a district. kids show. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Be honest. Red light district. Come well, on. I mean, it, it's yeah, entertainment. It's the same thing, sort of. But, uh, yeah, I mean, from the looks of the opening that we saw at the end, uh, uh, they're gonna dress like girls. <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna entertain. Oh. <laughs> um, when, like I said, Inosuke got a pretty face. Inosuke can just pass as a woman. So that's great. Or, I mean, there are guys probably who, who you know, work in this place too. <laughs> Preferences <laughs> goes both ways. Yeah, why not? True. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, I am excited to see. I, I do want that character, that that sound Ashira, to redeem himself pretty quickly because that first impression was not good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what the hell? But uh, we will see. So far, so good. It looks amazing again, and uh, we started with the feels pretty quickly. So, I am excited for the rest of the season. Yeah, me too. So yeah, that's pretty much it for episode eight. Episode two. Episode eight. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching this with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't want out the next one, we'll be on YouTube next week, guys. So keep an eye for it. We're going to see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys.